Pressure is another important parameter in pipe networks. Thus, we have dedicated this rig to pressure. Now, as you might see, you've got parallel pipes in the rig, and the difference between these parallel pipes is that you know varies in pipe diameter. So you've got smaller pipes as we move well down, and also we have added complexity. So although these are straight pipes, we've got four bends here. In this loop, we have got a T-joint and again, four other bends. So we're trying to reduce diameters, but also add complexity. And what we, with the help of you know, just a simple pump, we can push water through each of these loops. We can isolate them with the help of valves. And we can understand how does each component add to pressure drop. So the way we do that is with pressure transducers. So they pick up pressure differences between two points and we've tried to use them across a meter of pipe, uh, across a bend, across a T-joint, and with the help of the pressure drops, we can understand how much does a certain component add to the pressure drop of your entire system. Because data sheets that are provided by uh, manufacturers might be correct for a lab test that they've done, but in real system, they perform very differently. Another thing is that pressure might be measured completely differently when the pipes are virgin and it's just a new brand new system. However, over time as pipes corrode, the pressure drops increase dramatically, especially at bends and T-joints where debris is uh, collected and all these things happen. So these, all these factors add into the overall pressure drop. And thus, you know, a, you know, a design engineer would suggest you know, replacing your pump, for example, and upsizing it. However, it's just a matter of corrosion debris that has been collected. So we're trying to not only look at pressure, but also increasing on uh, adding to the service life of the pipe. Another common thing uh, with these rigs is that you can always, we have these touch screens where we help make sure our you know, research students and trainees come and measure all these values from the different sensors. They can get all their experimental data and then compare it with theoretical data and then finally understand how much of a difference there is between the theoretical equations that are used in software such as BIM or other system software and how much do they vary from real experimental data because we saw that in one of the equations that is available BIM, Revit's BIM, had a 38% error compared to experimental data.